What's up, guys? Welcome to the content of this package show. We're in episode six, and this week we are going to be talking about our latest sample pack that we released today, Mirage, produced by 42 North, my good brothers, John and Joel McNeil. They came up to the office to pay a visit. What's up, fellas? Yo, yo. What's up, man? So first things first, man, it's nice to get a 42 North project uh, out here in the streets, man. Yeah, yeah. It's the beginning. Just the yeah, beginning. Just the beginning. Can't yeah. tell y'all a bunch, but got some things coming. Yeah. With the soul surplus umbrella. I mean, unless you want us to tell. I mean, you guys can. Like, it'd be nice to introduce some of this news to the public. This is a nice medium to be able to do that. Yeah, so it's still, it's in the works. It's the early stages. I mean, obviously, where there's nothing super set in stone, which is good and bad mm-hmm. in, in many cases. But we're trying to be, you know, diligent about getting things done and just just starting to crank out some music and this was kind of like a like a kickstarter the pack you know just getting in the studio and just cranking as if we were you know doing doing beats so right doing the pack was like a a a nice it was a cool like fresh start to to start working on the production for the ep or album or whatever we were choosing to do so Mm -hmm. it was fun john yeah man um we just think it's time. Uh, we've built a company based off of sound design and packs, and obviously y'all have been seeing more of what we really are, you know, just a media company. And really it's just, it started as musicians and producers coming together, doing stuff that we like to do and trying to do stuff we would use. So it's only right. It's a natural progression for us. You guys can start seeing the thing we actually do and have been doing is just, you know, produce and play. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we want to get some original music to y'all that y'all can vibe to. Kind of had some of that stuff hit on the Soul Surplus kind of network kind of like last year. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, man, we got like good responses from people. So, yeah, because like, I was going to say, I think what the last one that it was technically like you guys was probably like Port Rich Volume 4 roundabout, maybe three or four, where it was like straight up a 42 North produced. You know, yeah. sample pack. Been a, been a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of funny too that this week specifically that I put out a pack and then you guys put out a pack in the same week. It's kind of like going all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Sometimes kind of how we you got to go go back and revisit the first first love, quote unquote. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, Smite's been holding us down. He's added a whole other vibe and sound to to us, man. So just like. You know, he's a one man band. He, he he can do it all. Yeah. You know. He's also low key trash, but you know, we let him cook. <laughs> As he's sitting right here in the room <laughs> with joking. us, right? <laughs> he's 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 here with us yeah. in the studio. If you guys can see what he's doing off the off the mic right now, uh you, yeah. you would be appalled. <laughs> we just got so much talent though on this, you know, on the team, on Soul Surplus team, you know. We just wanna let everyone hear like the just different dynamics of what everyone brings and you know, all of our identities musically. We hope y'all can hear more of it because we're more in the background. Right. Um, so. I think that was the thing I love about this week specifically was, you know, Smythe has almost seemingly feels like sometimes he's carrying us sonically, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, for with sure. the amount of packs that he's banging out. And it was just nice for this week to kind of have just this nice little detour and departure kind of back to the essence of what mm-hmm. got us here to this to this point, man. And um, For sure, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Mirage is definitely... I, I don't even know how to categorize it. I, I would say that it's 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 soul, but you guys kind of touch a few different areas sonically within the pack. Now, Mirage, I was talking to John a little bit of, even about that name. It's a pretty in my opinion, is probably the the dopest name to come out for a pack because it, in my opinion it it so truly identifies you guys as brothers. <laughs> and one of the reasons why uh Zari and I went uh, visually, the direction that we did was because it's it's basically a representation of kind of like who you guys are. Where when you come together, it looks dope, but you guys are kind of like opposite sides of of the spectrum. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, so that's dope. I I know when we started it, I think did we did we make the composition first or did we? Yeah, we made one composition to send one demo to send that yeah. West to see if he even wanted us to go in that direction. Yeah, so there's nothing like no set. I guess, um, goal or, um, yeah, and there was no goal or any type of feel we had for the pack going in. We kind of just made something and then 
actually when I went to save it, I was like, yeah, we need to save this as something, you know, as a pack name because our, you know, the way we name our files and whatnot. So I was like, we need a name. And that's when we started thinking and we just came up with two, two different ideas. And I think Mirage was the one that stuck the most. Yeah, it was going to be like Nomad's Mirage because I was getting yeah. like ch- traveling in a desert vibes from the one track we were making. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Mirage just stuck a lot better. And I like the way you guys just took it with the art. I mean, I just love that just kind of assembly line thing we have with our package packs each week comes from like track to name to visual concept like it's just it's always great i love that like team effort coming together and piecing it right make mm-hmm. it dope yeah and i think that was one thing even too with with our two packs specifically that was that's different from the other packs smith is such a planner that he already knows direction wise where he's going before he even sits down and creates right our packs we kind of just sat down <laughs> just started creating and then whatever mood that we kind of like yeah weren't on the schedule necessarily exactly yeah. exactly and uh you know it it's it's great to hear you guys on records um you know john you already know the first thing i screamed to you over text was mm-hmm. <laughs> i need to hear more john baseline <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh-huh. cuz such a distinct like feature to when you're on not just sample packs but just in general even just in music in general you know Smythe is a great a great bass player Phenomenal, but he, uh, <laughs> you know, he don't, it's a pale in comparison to my man John Dill. I'm only saying this because Smythe is in here. He's yeah, so bad right now. Trying to get a rise out of him. Nah. No, but it is a different. It's a different feel altogether. You guys definitely play. Yeah, it's different identities, different, different yep. and I love that about music. Like you can truly hear people's different voice in mm-hmm. it. Um, this is the way I speak on bass, and you know, some people like it, some people don't. Some people prefer other things. But you know, <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Somebody back there said he doesn't know anyone uh, who doesn't appreciate it, which is I'm very grateful for those kind words. Um, but yeah, man, I just try to be me, and I'm trying to just push further, explore more tone, tones. Especially, you'll get to hear that on the music we'll create and get to y'all. Just want to push the envelope of maybe even hear some things you wouldn't expect from bass. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just the way I speak, the voice I use, and I want to maybe convey that a little bit more going forward under the soul surplus banner right so sonically where do you think that you guys kind of drew, you know drew in inspiration from or was it just kind of just really just off the top top to bottom kind of was off the top you mean for the pack right mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely off the top because yeah. we just went in studio made something and then like i said we named it afterwards so yeah. definitely had no no uh nothing set in mind yeah had it I know we definitely, though, agreed on a couple concepts and approach. We were like, um, you know, let's really approach this from a classic sample kind of way. Like, like what are, like, you know, the stuff that's just very sample-oriented in this world is like, let's approach it from there. Uh, what, are, what are cats just going to sample immediately and quickly and easily? And that's what we did. We approached it from there. And then just a couple sound elements were like, yeah, we really want to incorporate just like the the droning kind of sounds in the background for texture. Right. And like obviously like gritty tape texture as well over it. Like that lo-fi kind of feel. Um, just more gritty sounds and like synths that float kind of throughout it. Just yeah, real gritty and, and like warm, but like atmospheric as well. Right. Which we kinda of like like to live in both worlds, like that alternative world, but very soulful. Right. We just always find our space right in, in that lane. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to stay right there because I I really feel like what John just said really accurately captures who you guys are. You guys are really more an alternative soul collective, in my opinion, when it comes to 42 North. So even if you're leaning in the alternative way, you're still soulful. And then even if you're leaning in the soul way, you're still alternative. And you guys kind of just like, you kind of stay right there at all times. Even Even though, like I said, you can go a little bit harder to either side. But in my opinion, I just don't, I don't think there's anybody out here that, that sounds like you guys. Why you, and that's why when we first met, so I was drawn to you guys. And um, do you think that that's something that you want to kind of continue to do moving forward with like future sample packs or, you know, cause yeah. I know we tend to be a little niche, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it's a, it's a sound and we obviously can't, 
can't shake it as it is our ourselves. So it's gonna it's gonna naturally come out. And we did we did talk about it like just getting in the studio and just you know just banging packs out like that mm-hmm. in a day or whatever it is two days and just you know cultivating a sound while we're there and whatever whatever we end up with is what we got and mm. i think that's part of the whole the whole art form and the process is just just doing you and whatever you end up with you just go with it and trust that it's good i think that's what's unique about this team too is you know we always get those comments like man you guys are machines and but i think I think the team just genuinely, genuinely loves music, like all together. Yeah. So it, it it doesn't really. Now I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes when you do get to the end of them sample packs, creatively you do kind of feel like yeah. you're pulling teeth a little bit to yeah. try to eat something. <laughs> Especially out. if you're doing trying to do it do it all in a day or two days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That last one actually, we got to the last one that night. We were both in there like half sleep, staring at I the was, wall. My head was on the desk. He was like. Laid back in his chair with his bass sleeping, with the <laughs> like the old with days. the comp on loop just for hour for about an hour. And we wake up, it's still going, and I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'll add something tomorrow to it. And lo and behold, I didn't. Just bounced it out, <laughs> <laughs> and it was still fire as well, is. Well, that's part of it. Is like you know you'll get so invested in making those packs, and you sometimes you start overthinking stuff. You're like, you yeah, know, it's kind of good as is, and you know. It's about space sometimes. Exactly. I mean, you always coached that from the beginning. Wes was like, you know, we got to think about what people ultimately want in general. And, like, they need space. They need time to chop. You mm-hmm. know, need a whole bunch of things happening. But then still give them variety mm-hmm. and have moments within each of those little spaces. So, yeah, it was, yeah, all comes full circle. Got you. It kind of felt like arpeggiated synths were, like, the best part of this pack. Like that was like kind of like my favorite thing, and I think that you guys like like John just said did an excellent job of kind of leaving space, but those arpeggiated synths were the thing that kind of bridge mm-hmm. some of those two chords together. Yeah. And really, honestly, that's such a callback to yeah. classic records from special, the past. Yeah. Special keyboard, yeah, you don't hear them a lot. Joel was using so I was like, why not add them in there? Right, you, you, you were using the profit right on all of them, basically. Yeah, most likely, yeah. yeah. The profit. I, I, I was I I actually wondered. I was like, I wonder if this is if this is profit based because, you know, like we said in the past, me and Joel were talking about it. I think on a former episode, something that practically new to mm-hmm. the to the ensemble. Mm-hmm. I feel like we always it's like once a quarter there's like a new keyboard that's added to the yeah, to yeah, the arsenal. Yeah. So Smythe had the the pianet on the cookout, which was killing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and then on this Kill one, it. obviously, you guys were running to the profit. What's it like? Um, What's it like programming? Because I, I obviously I'm you're not playing straight out outboard mm-hmm. all the time, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure you're mixing sounds. And mm-hmm. That's kind of how, how you work. Oh, well, it's cool because the profit has a function where you could play, you could press a record button, and then play something, and then hit the play button, and it'll play it back. So it'll just loop. You could set the uh, BPMs or whatever the time signature, mm. and you could let it loop while you tweak the knobs to get the sound you want. That's dope. And you just recorded it. And so I was literally doing that every every comp. If I hit a brick wall, I just play something and start tweaking it until I get something cool and then record it. That's dope. So almost like a built in MIDI that you yeah. can't see. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's that's fire. Now I understand why that joint was so expensive. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Profit is like a Ferrari. Yeah. For sure. For us. That's you know. the thing you grab if the the cribs burning down. Exactly. <laughs> then the laptop. Right. Exactly. The hard drive. Yep. Um now from a John, you're using Lakeland on this joint? No, I was using just a Fender P base. Mm. I have a just a, a Mexican one, but I mean it sounds dope. It's got EMG pickups in it, which are a little bit more like modern sounding. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, the way we just filtered everything, we just made it have an old school sound. I honestly like composing just with a P bass. Just real cut to the chase. Like, what does bass sound like to you? Mm-hmm. To me, it sounds like that, like that OG, just hollow sound. But then there's, I've been experimenting more with like pick tones. Mm-hmm. But I don't really use a pick. Um, just you know, playing more back near the bridge and um, P bass is like my go-to with uh, composing. And I like using my fretless too. I, I feel like so, a lot of people try to identify me through that on records in the past. But, yep. 
Got you. Now, even though this is kind of like a, I don't want to say it's a typical sound, it did mm. sound like it was a tad brighter than mm. some of some of the other stuff that you guys have worked on. Mm. Was that on purpose? And you know what what type mm. of what type of like outboard gear or plugins were you guys using to kind of get that sound? Yeah. So you said that I remember you telling us to keep it aggressive and because your pack was so mellow. So going in, I I know we're just not aggressive, you know, producing sounding guys. So right. I figured if I could keep things a little bit brighter and not super lo-fi as usual and, you know, a lot of top end rolled off, it could still have that aggressive feel to it, even though it was a quote-unquote a Mirage pack, which isn't, you don't think aggressive when you think of Mirage, but right. I guess that brightness kind of kept that aggressiveness in it. I had it on in here yesterday in the office and uh, got to really listen to it for real, for real for the first time. Because I think I, I, up until that point, I only heard the demo. Mm. So I was really looking forward to it. But um, but uh, yesterday when you sent the whole pack over, uh, you know, between Zari and I handling, handling all of the visual stuff, it was just like, you know, so now I had to go through the pack to figure out, you know, which joint I was going to use to to try to accurately represent, like, what the pack is about. So, um, mm, picked a good one. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> but no, nah, but seriously, like, kudos to you guys. I mean, it's, you know, this is definitely going to be one of the favorites. You know, we're in kind of like that slow season mm-hmm. right now. Just, you know, in music, the summer and the winter tend to be a tad slow. So I'm I'm actually looking for uh, pretty much the cookout and rainy season and mirage as soon as like all the end of august kind of comes around there's probably mm-hmm. gonna be a whole gang of sales because they got a whole lot of attention i mean it would you know it did it's already done pretty decent sales wise but um but uh but again you know just really good stuff guys and um appreciate you guys coming out man thank man, you man pleasure